hello hi everyone uh, today we will talk about uh, physics and the physics in the physics we will talk about uh, a specific uh, topic which is called the standard of time so let's start the topic the measurement of time has two respects uh, for civil and for some scientific uh, purposes we want to know the time of day so that we can order events in sequence in most scientific world, scientific world we want to know how long an event lasts the time and travel thus any time standard must be able to answer the questions at what time does it occur and how long does it last table 1 to 3 shows the range of intervals then uh, that can be measured they vary by a factor of about 10 power 63 we can use any phenomena that repeats itself as a measure of time <coughs> the time the measurement consists of uh, counting uh, as a repetitions including the fractions theory for we could use an oscillating pendulum a mass spring system or quartz crested example for example of the many repetitive phenomena in the nature of rotation of earth on its axis we determines the length of the day you was used as time standard of for centuries one means solar uh, solar second was defined to be one by 86400 of a mean solar day so, quartz crystal clocks based on electrically stained periodic vibration of quartz crystal serve with a sec secondary time. Secondary time standards: a quartz clock can be uh, calibrated against the rotating Earth by astronomical observation and used to measure time in the laboratory. The best of these have kept time with a precision of about one second and a half uh, kept time with a precision of about one second and uh, two two hundred thousand years but even this precision is not sufficient for the demands of the modern science technology and commerce in 1967 the 13th generation conference on weights and measures adopted a definition of second based on a characteristic frequency of the radiation emitted by uh, a QSM atom in particular they stated that they stated that uh, the second is the duration of this amount of vibration of radiation emitted by a uh, isotope of the uh, cesium atom so that's all about the time of the that's all about the standard of time now let's uh, it's something now about the standard of length <coughs> so the first international standard of length was a bar of a plate platinum iridium alloy called standard meter which was kept at the international bureau of weights and measures near paris the distance between two fine lines engraved uh, near the ends of the bar when bar was held at temperature of zero degrees centigrade and supported me mechanically in a pres prescribed way we defined to be uh, one meter historically the meter was in intended to be uh, one ten million of the distance from the north pole to equator to equator along the meridian line through Paris so however accurate however however accurate measurement uh, showed that the standard meter bar differs slightly about uh, 0.023 percent from this value because the standard meter is not very accessible uh, accurate uh, master copies of it were made by and uh, sent to uh, standardized laboratories throughout the world 
The secondary standards were used to calibrate other still more accessible measuring rods. Thus, until recently, every measuring rod or device derived its authority from standard meter through a complete of comparison using micro microscopes. Dividing engines since 1959. Since 1959, so this statement had also been true for Yard, uh, whose legal definition, whose legal definition in the United States was adopted in the year to be. One yard is equal to 0.9114 meter, which is equivalent to one inch is equal to 2.4 centimeters. So this was all about this. Now let's talk about the, the standard of mass. The SI standard of mass is a is a platinum iridium cylinder that uh, kept at the International Bureau of Wells and Measures uh, and assigned by international agreement a mass of one kilometer uh, secondary. Standards are sent to standardize laboratories in other countries and masses of other other bodies can be found by the equal arm balance techniques to a precision of one part of and ten power uh, eight. The U.S. copy of international standard of mass known as uh, prototype kilogram. Number 20 is housed in a vault at the National Institute of Standards and Technology. It is removed on more than once a year for check, checking the value of a uh, priority standard. See 1889 prototype number. No 20 has been taken up, uh, to France twice for recomposition with the master kilogram. When it is removed from the vault, two people are always present, one to carry in the kilogram and a pair of horseships, the second to carry the kilogram and this first person should fall. So that's what I about that. <coughs> now let's talk about the precision and significant figures. So as we improve the quality, As we improve the quality of our measuring instruments and the uh, sophistication of our techniques, we can carry out experiments at every increasing level of precision. That is, we can extend the measured results to more and more significant figures and correspondingly reduce the experimental uncertainty of the result. Both the number of significant figures and uncertainty tell about uh, tell something about our estimate of the precision of the result that is the result x is equal to um, 3 meter implies that we know less about x then the value of x is equal to 3.14159 meter so when we declare x is equal to 3 meter we mean that we are reasonably certain that x lies between 2 meter and 4 meter and uh, whereas expressing x as 3.14159 meter means that x probably lies between 3.14158 meter and 3.14160 meter if you express x as 3 meter when in fact you really believe that x is 3.14159 meter you are with the holding information that might it might be important on the other hand if you express if you express x is equal to 3.14159 you uh, meter when you really have no basis for knowing anything other than x is equal to 3 meter you are being somewhat uh, dishonest by claiming to have more information than you really do. Attention to significant figures is important when 
presenting the result of measurements and calculations and it is uh, equally as wrong to include too many as too few there are few simple rules to follow in indicating how many significant figures to keep so this are about it now let's uh, talk about another topic that is called kinematics with the vectors so uh, sorting party has become trapped in forest from their uh, field camp based on their exploration. The sources know that they are 2.0 km from field camp in a, a direction of 30 degree west of uh, north. They also know that field camp is located 3.0 km uh, from the base camp in direction 40. 5 degree north of east so they wish to reduce their position to the base camp so that food and supplies can be dropped by air as close to their position as possible how can they pinpoint their location relative to the base camp <coughs> although there are several ways to solve this problem the most compact way is in terms of vectors Vectors are quanti quantities that have both magnitude and direction that follow a certain uh, set of mathematical rules of processes such as addition and multiplication. The position vector R1 in a, in a direction 45 degree uh, locates the field came relative to the base came. The position vector R2 locates a scouting party relative to the field camp. You know, now you will know will know about how uh, the vectors uh, are adding vector adding vectors. So, as in the case of Figure 2-1, we often want to add two or more vectors to find the sum. Consider the two vectors A and B. We wish to find the vector S so that S is equal to A plus B. Figure shows a graphical construction that allows us to find A plus B. We first draw the vector A instead of drawing B with its tail at the origin. As figure 2, 4, A, we move B vector until its uh, tail coincides with the head of the A. As long as we don't change its magnitude or direction, we can move a vector in this way. The vector S representing the sum A plus B is now drawn from the tail of A to the head of B. If we are adding more than two vectors, we can continue plating them tail to head in this way and the sum vector is drawn from the tail of the first to the head of the last. Often we can generate geometric or trigonometric relationships to find the magnitude of and direction of the sum vectors. Another way to add vectors is add uh, components. Uh, this is uh, uh, S is equal to A plus B means S I plus J is equal to this equation. So this will add about that, and now we will talk about uh, something new. There will be a new topic for us. So you can see these graphs also. So now let's talk about the first law and reference frames. Okay, so suppose you are passenger riding in a car and you are tightly held in your seat belt. When the brakes are applied, a book that was on the seat next to you begins to slide forward. There is no apparent force on the book and uh, that is pushing it forward but relatively to you it appears to start moving in violation of newton's first law 
you your friend your friend start moving and oration you to first like your friend bill who is standing along the side of the road sees you the car and the book are moving together say uh are moving together say at 22 kilometers so that's all about uh, this one and it notices nothing unusual detects no violation of the use buttons first law so we will now uh, talk about another lecture in the next lecture and the next video is coming soon please wait for that thank you very much